wonder. These are just some of the words used to describe Dr. Harvey Passes. Dr. Passes explores interesting people and ideas that will stimulate you. He questions the people who develop, create, and employ novel concepts in business and everyday lives. He especially loves to speak with successful people. How did they do it? How can you do it too? So let's join Dr. Harvey Passes in his quest of wonder and curiosity as we watch Dr. Harvey Passes Presents. I love Long Island. I know you hear me saying that all the time, but it doesn't stop. I love Long Island and some of the greatest resources that we have here on Long Island. Yes, the beaches, yes, the beautiful scenery and all the agriculture and the wines, but we have great chefs. People from all over the world realize that Long Island is also a gastronomic area. It's just a terrific place. And in my travels across Long Island on my belly, I came across a friend of mine who opened up a restaurant recently right in good old Hicksville. And I, I just loved his cooking. It was so different, so interesting. And he's such a an amazing guy. He's done so many interesting things that I pleaded with him, I cajoled him, to come on down to the studio and do a show and show you some interesting dishes that he cooks. So without further ado, I want to bring to you Chef Calvin Kerr from Olivium Restaurant. Cal. Hey, good to see you, Doc. <laughs> Thanks for the being Great here. to see you. Just terrific. It's always fun talking with you. You, you know, you're such a well-rounded guy. It's not just that you're going to sit and talk to me about the history of the carrot. I mean, you're going to talk about the culture and the food and the places and the people because it all comes together. Oh, no question. Yeah, it's I a... mean, in the past, we've done shows on Long Island, you and I. And correct, you correct. Long Island cooking, and, and it was great. It was just terrific. Well, we're playing without food. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to play with your food. Absolutely. Yes, indeed. And this wonderful gentleman next to you, don't look so scared. Come on. <laughs> okay. It's, it's terrific. I love your name. I love your name. Carlington yeah. Stevenson. Welcome. Nice to meet you. <laughs> it's great to see you. Terrific. And that you guys broke away from the kitchen to come down and join us, which I think is fabulous. Just terrific. It's always a pleasure. Uh, let me tell the folks at home, even though you've been on before, a little okay. bit about you and then Carlington also. Calvin Kerr, he actually, I think you were born in Jamaica? Uh, born in London. And born in London. Yes. And then you went to Jamaica. Yes, okay. I went to private and, school. And uh, you, well, your father went to Oxford where you met your mom. And yeah. then you joined the Air Force in 74. Uh, yep. Who's Air Force? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ours, I should say. Ours, right. okay. Okay. And then you were in the, you were in the Vietnam. Uh, Vietnam era. Yep. Right, 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 right. Okay. And you were there for six years? Yeah, yeah. Good I enjoyed God. It. I enjoyed you, it. you enjoyed it? I enjoyed this it. This isn't the movie or a dinner. I no, no. Uh, Vietnam, very nice. I yeah. enjoyed it. It was good. Give well, me another one. I think war. it was more the comrade airship and the more, more of the organization of the military that I enjoyed. Right, right, right. I was saying you got your honorable discharge, and then you started cooking as a side job in the Air Force. Yeah, yeah. And then from there, you just took off. Yeah, I worked in the NCL leadership uh, uh, restaurant, and that's where I kind of took a job as a prep cook. I said, you know, this might be something I could use on the outside, and eventually I did, and I expanded upon that. And you found out that this was your calling in life. Yes, indeed. Terrific, yeah. because from there, I mean, your background is very, very interesting. I can't see it. No, but your background <laughs> is very, very, very interesting. Your background is uh, not only were you the executive chef of Gurney's Inn, where that's a no-slouch place. No, no question. Okay, uh, but you also, you got a cooking school uh, up in Buffalo, which yeah. we'll talk about in a moment. Okay. And uh, you also do culinary classes down here on Long Island. Yes, I do. And, uh, I mean, you just work with uh, underprivileged kids, and you're, you're helping people get on and on and using food as the vehicle for them to, uh, what's the story? You don't want to give them a fish. You want to teach them how to fish. Oh, no question, yeah. You know, yeah. which is wonderful. Yeah. We're going to get all to that in, okay. in a moment. Excellent. But you, you then started your own restaurant here uh, called Olivium yes. in, uh, in Hicksville, which, I mean, you get a chance to just do all of your magic which is just wonderful, which we're going to get a chance to see. And now, Carlington Stevenson, oh, that name, <laughs> uh, Carlington <laughs> Stevenson. Um, it's a that, name, right? It's a great name. It's a terrific name, absolutely. So you were born in Jamaica, yes. and not Avenue, Jamaica no, the uh, island. Jamaica Ochoas. Okay, right, Ochoas Rios. Ochoas Rios. Right. Okay, fine, okay. And then, from, then you went to school there in cooking? Right. Okay, and, and then from, from there from you there came to U.S.? From there and I came to America. They went to Gurney's Inn, and that's where two you guys met. Yeah, we right. met at Gurney's. And then you started out as, a, I like saying this, is a God de manger. Right. Uh, what, what is that? That's the guy who responds for making salad, food carving, carving ice, 
All those nice cheese powder. Decorative stuff. Decorative stuff. It means you got to have good hands. Got to have good hands. Should have been a dentist. Steady hands and everything, too. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. And then from there, you worked your way up now You're as a banquet as a, manager. As a banquet chef. Banquet chef, rather. Yep. Whatever, it's whatever alongside Calvin. Right. And the two of you work together so well that from yeah, there, you started this restaurant right now, right. and now he's your sous chef and you're the executive chef. Yes, yes. Terrific. This is terrific. We're Great. the formidable team. Oh, the formidable yeah. team. Okay, let's get right down to it now because we've got some interesting dishes. Oh, yes. And, and, and we have some wines from Long Island that we want to talk about, and we have a surprise guest with us, but we'll talk right. about that later. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so first, let's start out with the first dish, and then we'll get into discussions. Uh, what is our first dish that we're going to see you cook today? This is a scallops ranchero. Scallops um, ranchero. What, and it, what is it? It's basically a, a twist on a Caribbean style cooking. Caribbean using, style cooking. Go using uh, the spices that incorporate some of the Caribbean cooking, mm -hmm. and also merging it with some of the foods from the Santa Fe area. So you kind of have a Tex-Mex uh, down south of the border into the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. But we thought that it would be interesting. What we wanted to do particularly is to be able to give you. I guess, an opportunity to try something different mm -hmm. without kind of going all the way out. Okay. Uh, in other words, you know, there are some familiarity to the dish, right. but therefore the spices have changed. little twist. And that's little what twist. you always do. Yeah. You always yeah. have a little twist. Well, okay. you got to work out the side of the box. Let's, you know? uh, when, when we roll the DVD, I'm going to ask you to tell us what exactly we're looking at here. Sure. So, sure. so my crew, let's roll the DVD and let's see Scallops Rancheros. And when you get a chance at home, see if you can make this. Shoot. What have we got? Here we've got our, our scallops, which have been uh, patted dry, right. and we have our ranchero chilies, dried chilies. Okay. Gives it spice, gives it kick. Yeah, it gives it a, a little flavor. It's a nice, smoky, earthy kind of flavor to it. Okay, what do we got next? We have our chopped uh, red on peppers. Right. And we have a little bit of uh, tortilla chips that have been julienned. And what I did is I roasted some corn just to keep going with that smoky essence. Uh -huh. Our salad that we're going to use is a mix of uh, mescaline and a little bit of chicory, right. just to kind of give it a little bite and a little texture to it. Right. So here we are placing our, our scallops on our sizzle plate. We're giving it a nice little dust of the ranchero chilies. I like that ranchero. It's a, you know, ranchero chili is mostly a chipotle base, so it's a different kind of heat, not one that burns the tongue right away, but more something flavor. That, more flavor, more flavor, earthy aroma, very smoky. I see you packing it down just Okay, now, now, so we're going to put it in our oven, basically, you know, 350, 350 degrees for about six to eight minutes. Okay. That was fast. Yeah, that was quick. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Modern technology. Yeah. Yeah, no, uh, so easy. now, you know, here we are. We're going to do our placing. Scallops are looking lovely, like that honey golden brown. Oh, and that's kind of really what you want to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, you gotta get that color. Now, now we, so we start salad. with our salad. And basically, right. what I'm doing is I'm looking, it's kind of a dressing a centerpiece. Um, what I do basically is I look at this as an object of the art, so everything has to be appealing to the eye as well as uh, the nose as well, the operatories. Mm -hmm. And now, so we placement of our scallops. This is basically how it would come to you. In other words, the scallops would come facing you right. as opposed to kind of going all the way around. I want you to see the picture. So we've added our chopped red peppers, mm -hmm. which we've, uh, we've roasted, and we're staying in with that same hue of uh, roasting peppers. Mm -hmm. We're coming along with our corn relish. Now we top it with some uh, julienne of tortillas. I like that. That's yeah, really it's a little nice. corn tortilla. It's give it adds a little crunch. crunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crunch, nice. And the sauce we're using is a Vidalia with a, just a hint of raspberry in it. Wow, what a So that kind of works. Yeah, yeah, raspberry. yeah. It has a sweet and uh, a wonderful essence that it brings to the plate. Nice, very nice. And it's you know it's a it's a wonderful summer dish. It's very easy to prepare. Oh, look how pretty that looks, huh? See, you got a red wine with it too. Oh yes, nothing beats. A good dish, for, like a good wine. Wow, that's terrific. You know, I'm, I'm kind of in the mood for that. That looks pretty good. Well, now, we have a special guest. You have an individual who is your star uh, pupil in your culinary uh, classes. Yes. And she happens to be an attorney. And her name is Joanne Abreu. Yes. And uh, Joanne, I thank you so much for coming down and helping us from your busy <laughs> schedule <laughs> as a busy attorney. My pleasure. Oh, thank you so much. Could you? Thank you so much. Oh, Lovely to look at, and so are you. Thank you very <laughs> much. Thank you. Very, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, this looks great. Now, 
This, this looks absolutely amazing. Whoa, wow, look at that. They're yeah, we, we added a little twist also. We felt that uh, it needed a little apricots in there, so we caramelized some apricots and brought that in there, uh, keeping it on, on a Caribbean-type flavor. I like that a lot. I, I like the marriage of something sweet with something with a little bite to it. Mm -hmm. Good. It keeps, yeah. it keeps your mouth getting confused yes, and get excited yes, yes, and yes, enthralled. Yes. Interesting. Carlington, I'm going to yes. start by pouring you a glass of rooster tail. Good morning wine. Good morning wine, right. <laughs> Could you bring your glass over here, sure. my friend, and then I'll pour it for you, and I'll talk all about this. comes from Long Island. Uh, this is, and can I trouble you? Let me sure. Get the over there. Great. There you go. This is uh, from the Old Field Vineyard, uh, all the way out in, uh, is it, I think it's Peconic or is it Kutchog? Let me see. Uh, Old Field Vineyard is from, um, uh, hello, hello, uh, Peconic, Peconic, New York. And uh, our good friend, Chris and Roz Bays, see if you can get a close-up of this, they, um, they produce some really high-quality wines, which have been given some uh, great uh, accolades. And I'm thrilled when I hear that the Long Island wines are getting these, these great accolades right yes, now. Yes, Just yes, terrific. Yes. And this is a blend. Thank you very much. I'll leave it right over here. And this is a blend of, I believe, Merlot and Cabernet Franc. Wow, very good. Which would very be an interesting good. blend to go with oh, this. Yes, yes. So um, let's mm. try this, and then we can have a taste of the food, and then we can discuss it a little bit. Sure. Oh, check the nose on this. Yeah, oh, good, good morning wine. Yeah, definitely good morning wine. Mmm. Wonderful, this rooster tail. Very nice. Let's check this out. This looks terrific. This has a nice finish. Nice finish. Nice Excellent. finish. Mmm. Wonderful. What a what an interesting dish, and again I, I love apricots. You love it. This is a nice again. We do a lot of grilling with fruits and things like that. Uh, basically, if you notice mm. that I stay away from a lot of fried things, I try to stay on the more with the healthier, not only for myself but for everybody else as well. Mm. You do the show. Yes. Taste this. Let me give it a shot here. Mm. <laughs> you got you have to taste your own your own melodies. That's fabulous. Boy, does the wine change. Um, Once you taste the food and the chipotle sauce, uh, rub, whatever we call it, sauce or rub, rub. Mm -hmm. and once it mixes with the wine, mm. taste it with that uh, rooster tail. There you go, Colin. With yeah. that Cabernet Franc, a blend of Merlot and Cabernet Franc. Watch what happens. Watch how the wine all of a sudden shoots up a notch <laughs> as you choke on television. <laughs> wow, it's great. Get a close up of his eyes um. going blue. <laughs> It's very good. How is that, Carlington? It's good. Isn't Excellent. that interesting? What a what a great, absolutely terrific taste. And if you take a sip of that, you'll see how how nicely how how yeah. well it goes. Uh, I tell you, uh, am I correct that everything you have here is Long Island? Yes. Yes. Uh, well, one of the things that we did was that um, this dish was made particularly for this program and yourself. Right. So this was created, but with the theme of. Uh, Everything that we're going to use is Long Island wines and also Long Island food. So these are all local products that you can find out here, whether it be on the East End or here on in the middle of what I call Up Island, as we say, from coming from Montauk. Right. Supporting the local the local uh, individuals who grow these products, mm -hmm. uh, the harvesters, the guys who fish. Mm -hmm. I used to be a long liner out of Montauk myself, so I know what it's about trying to fish out of Montauk for cod and shark and, and other products and things like that. Right. Well, you've, you've been around. You've been around a while, yeah. and you, yeah. you just know everybody. Well, so uh, it makes it, it makes it really good for you to get good, fresh, right. quality seafood oh, yeah, and, yeah. and everything else, which which I, I, I think is terrific. I like mostly how you have a blend of everything, and, and your flavors blend beautifully. You know, I, I would I, I want to get to to your your next dish. Okay. Your next dish. What what are you making for your next dish? Well, we use we're using a black bass. Black and, bass. And we decided that we would go with it with a slight chipotle rub, and keeping with the same theme. And what we've done with the black bass is we've also stuffed it with peppers. So we stuffed yeah, it with peppers. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to get a chance to see how you prepare yeah. everything and how you stuff fish. Yes. I'm interested to see how you stuff the fish, and yet when you cook it, the stuffing doesn't come out. No. Because no. that's always that's always a, a pain in the neck. Well, neck. I use a surgical te technique that you use. <laughs> okay. But <laughs> okay. well, we're going to get a chance to okay. see all this, which would be absolutely a, a lot of fun. It would be absolutely terrific. You're going to get a chance now. So... Keep watching this, and you're going to see what a master, and these two masters, how they put things together so that you can do this at home. All right, let's get a chance right now. Let's roll the DVD, and we're going to see right now... Black Bass Santa Fe style. Black Bass Santa Fe. 
I think that sounds terrific. Black Bass Santa Fe. Um, now, you'll tell us uh, exactly what we're seeing here right now. Well, here we've, we've had a black bass, which has already been gutted. I took the head off, basically, so for the squeamish ones. And right. I'm basically going to f take the fillets off of this. So, so here we are. We're cutting it down the center. Yeah, we're taking uh, the fillets off, deboning it every, as, as you weigh. Let's see if we could uh, really get in there close with a good shot. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. This was a nice fish. It's a good product uh, that we got locally. Um, a real nice product. You know, I, I do a lot of fishing out of Montauk in the summers myself, you know, porgies and so forth, pilot right. fish and things like that. So what are you cutting up? Right I'm chopping some red peppers right there. These are roasted red peppers. Okay. Uh, we want to we want to take that earthiness, and what we're doing is taking a bridge. We're making a bridge actually from the first appetizer all the way through. So they're going to be components from the first part of our meal all the way through the meal to the end. Now here, ladies and gentlemen, is how you keep everything stuffed inside the fish. You're making a continuous suture. That's yeah. what I call it when I do surgery. Well, you know, I come from a family <laughs> of doctors, so... There you go. <laughs> uh, it's, you know, this is something that I've always seen done. All right, you did it perfectly. I'm, I'm watching what you're doing, and I was very impressed, you know, at, at, uh, at how, you, uh, so now how we, you did that. Mm -hmm. So now we've got it basically in our saute pan. We're just bringing our oil up to temp. What we want to do is we want to sear this thing and lock in the juices and, and have it tighten up as quickly as possible. So we're going to start, as always, with most of our products. Most of our products start in a, in a saute pan, wow. and they're finished in the oven. Wow. So now that Collington's got the lovely color that we need, we're going to go in the oven, and we're going to finish it off and let it do the rest of the cooking there. So you need to have a pan that can go both places. Well, yes. Yeah, so, so, you know, and commercially with us, you know, or even at home, I have a pan that doesn't have a rubber handle, so I can kind of put the whole thing in there. I know, I know they're asking at home, uh, what's the temperature of the oven? The oven is set at 350. We normally keep our oven at 350. Okay. And that fish there, like that. How long that, was it in the oven? About 12 minutes. Okay. Now you take it out. So now, now you're adding olive oil? No, we're, yes. We're adding just a little bit more of a blended oil. Right. And what we want to do now is we want to saute it with the caramelizing of the onions. Look this is a red, on, red onion we're using. Look at the color of that. Look how Has a little bite to it. And Ooh, we've got some that? roasted peppers. Ooh. Ooh. This looks good. Needs now, a good big wine. now we've got a nice finish with a nice butter here. Whoa, this could be full of that, flavor. Yep. Ooh, there you so go. So we go. So we have our finished product. So you're cooking the sauce with the fish yes, in it. Yes, yes. It's basically we're working with the pan juice. Gotcha. I see. So now as we're dressing it, and this one here basically it it comes with a starch, uh, but we didn't feel that a starch needed to be carried along with it on this one here. Uh, you know, as you know that. I'm an old artist, so you know my basic background is oil painting, and I wanted to have the perfect kind of canvas to work on. Mm -hmm. And so this is where we're placing the things of this nature, and, mm -hmm. and keeping it healthy. So you know, most of our asparagus, we have asparagus in a lot of things that we do. I love uh, asparagus. Yeah, oh, fantastic. How do you cook that? You roast it? This one is grilled. Yeah. Grilled? Yep. Love it. Love it. Man, I, love, I don't have a grill in my kitchen. Now right. we're going to add just a little bit of the corn salsa. You remember from the initial? Yeah, so we're bringing yeah. this is called a bridge. So we're bringing it over, and basically for all the menu items, we keep going. Now what I've done, this is my little twist of fate. I've included a nice little port wine sweet sauce. Ooh. It's almost a, a slurry. Ooh, you know? nice counterpoint. Yes. Wow. And we've used our pan juice now just to glisten mm -hmm. and glaze over our fish. It looks so easy to do. It looks, you know, it you, is. You know, it you is know easy. You're, you're, you make mm -hmm. it look easy. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, look at that, huh? Wow, yeah. that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Nothing like the fireplace and good food and great wine. And good company. Yes, indeed. Uh, I see I see. we had that with mm. a red wine. Yes. So, so far, our first dish is seafood, red, red wine. Red wine. Our second dish is seafood, red, red wine. wine. Okay. And uh, you're just knocking off old uh, assumptions, presumptions. Yes. Well, presumption is that you would go with a white wine. Yeah. But I think with the earthy tones of the, the description of each item, sp particularly with uh, the chipotes, mm -hmm. uh, that you need a, a strong-bodied wine to carry the flavor, because the, the flavors are intense, so you need a wine that's going to complement it. As we spoke about before, great beginning, strong center, fantastic finish. Terrific. Talking about fantastic finish, we have our honored, esteemed counselor here. Yes. Joanne <laughs> Abreu, would you mind coming over here, please, and just uh, letting us try, oh, this looks good. This looks good. You're so lucky to work with him. I am very fortunate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> terrific. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Now we're going to try this with Osprey's Dominion, again, okay. a Long Island wine called the Meritage, mm. which is a blend. And Osprey's Dominion, I think, is out in Peconic, also in Peconic. Okay, okay? good, Okay, so let's pour a little bit for you, Carlington. Thank oh, you. I love that name, Carlington. Okay, and let's pour a, a little <laughs> bit for you, Calvin Kerr. 
Okay, and Dr. Passes. All right, here we go. You said that just yeah. yeah. Just threw it like that. <laughs> yeah. I threw it away. That was it. Okay, so now we we have a, a look at the beautiful osprey, which is again mm. one of our native birds. See if we get a close up of this. Our good friends from uh, Osprey's uh, Dominion, uh, Bill Tyree and Bud Kohler, and their winemaker, um, Adam Supernant, uh, they uh, very graciously uh, let us uh, use this for, for the show. And this wine's fabulous. They win awards all the time, all the time. Thank you very much. We'll leave this over here. The Meritage is blend, and a blend of uh, Cabernet Mer and Merlot uh, is, should go very well with this dish. Yes. Let's see what we've got here. Oh. You like the nose on this thing? Yeah. Nice. yeah. Wow, Nosenstein. Wow, this yeah. thing is really there. This has a great essence. Wow, huh? L Long Island. Yes, yes. Long Island. I'll have to bring my saute pan out to their winery, and uh, <laughs> we'll have to process some food on the spot. Sounds good to me. Okay. What is it, Bill? <laughs> Bill Tyree. For Bill Tyree. Thank you, Bill Tyree. We'll be cooking with this tomorrow. Absolutely. <laughs> no, it's fabulous. Now, obviously, you cut the string off. Yes. <laughs> I don't see it here. Do you, uh, how do you feel about people eating the skin? I, I mm. mean, we come, you know, from the culture that we come from, you know, basically people eat the whole fish, you know, mm. including um, the heads and so forth. So I think there's a there's an avenue when when the skin is needed, there's an avenue when it's not needed. I think it's, you know, it's appropriate at some times and inappropriate at other times. Ouch, this yeah. is good. This, this has got a lot good. of flavors. It's a, it's a big bang, you know, it's a very wow. big bang. Try this with that wine. Sure. This is just a fabulous dish. The flavors are so intense, and yet they kind of blend. Well, what you take, you know, the chipotle is a wonderful pepper. It's uh, a lot of people think when you're adding chipotle peppers, it's misrepresenting the sense of uh, it's going to be very hot. Mm -hmm. it, it's not that kind of heat with the chipotle. It's a very warm, kind of friendly feeling, and it has a great, great, nice, smoky, earthy tone. Then mm. try that with this wine. And then uh, let Carlington get a shot. And then I want to have a discussion mm -hmm. with you that is something you said earlier that I think needs explanation. First, I want to see your reaction with that lovely wine. Oh, pleasing. This yeah. is the bridge. That's you know? the word. I wanted yeah. to talk about yeah. the, bridge. the bridge. You keep using that over and over again, the bridge. I know you're not thinking about Robert Moses right. and going, cr and going to you know, right. New York to Long Island but with his bridges. But t tell me, what do you mean by well, a bridge? Let, the, let, the bridge? let my friend at home watching The, the bridge was a terminology that was brought to me actually when we were doing culinary competition. Mm -hmm. And I remember making a dessert, and it was a chocolate cake, is uh, the, uh, the chocolate uh, torte that I make. Right. And the judge said to me, because I had added a little bit of the chocolate into the whipped cream, mm -hmm. and he said, lovely bridge. Oh. It was the first time I heard that. Oh. And, and then after that, I said, hmm, I see what he means. He means there was a nice between going from the whipped cream and bringing it over onto the, the chocolate essence itself. So it's a nice a nice highway to it. So what we started doing when we designed menus was making a bridge all the way through. You know, of course, we have our chef's table. I, so wanted, it's a seven I course. wanted to get to yeah. that. When, when I have had dinner, when you've cooked for me, and you've made dishes. Now, normally, when I have had degustacion, mm -hmm. or tasting tables, you know, Correct. and usually, you know, the, the food just comes out. You get yeah. this dish, this dish, right, this, right. And, that. and there's there's really no rhyme or reason. Right. You'll try to pair it with a wine, right. but yeah. it stands unto itself. Right. It's right. like having Chinese food and then Mexican food right. and then right. French yeah. food. You know, right. hello, yeah, however. Parallel but not joint. Right. But what, what you do on your dishes is that you'll have your first dish and there'll be something in it that will lead you to the next dish. Correct. And then something in that one Correct. will lead you to the next dish. Yeah. And you've got your thread. There's there's pathways, and you know in food, and then you, you, the three concepts basically you want to have something with a strong start, just mm -hmm. like a good wine, healthy center. Mm -hmm. You know it's like a runner, quick out of the box, good run, but fantastic finish. And so we when we're marrying menus and and items, and whether it be appetizer all the way down to dessert, we're thinking in terms of how does this one dish go to the next dish. Well, so why don't we do on. this? When you talk about finish, let's go to your dessert. What okay. are we having for dessert? Uh, we've got a nice little cream puff selection for you here today. Uh, something that just kind of it's French puff pastry mm -hmm. uh, with just a little twist to it. Okay. We went, we went with a couple of different fruits that most times you would not find. Let's and you found that fish all, that fruit on one of the dishes earlier. So earlier. you'll see how I okay. make the bridge. Let's see that dish right now. And uh, let's see, what do you call it? This is a uh, Santa Fe Puffs. Santa Fe Puffs? With a, with a slurry. Okay, so let's see the DVD. Let's get a chance mm -hmm. to see this wonderful dessert. And here we go. We've got apricot, apricot cream, cream puff, puff with, with raspberry, raspberry slurry. slurry. Mm -hmm. 
Wow. Okay. Tell this me is a this is a nice dish. Uh, we're using a, a French puff pastry. This is something that you know it's very elegant, very simple to do as you as you're watching it being prepared. There, we have some whipped cream. Uh, we have some apricots which we have caramelized. Uh, what you see here now is me just separating the the puffs. So we're all baked in one section. I separate them because I like the the stacking principle. So we put our first French puff pastry down. And now we're going to add these caramelized apricots, which bring a nice, very nice sweet uh, and, and ecstatic flavor to it. They bring the excitement to this dish. The, the pastry itself speaks on its own. And with the apricots, it just kind of goes along with the whole game. So we've added some, a dollop of uh, whipped cream. Homemade. Oh, always homemade whipped cream in my house. <laughs> we've added the top. And right now we're going to add just a little bit of... Uh, of a raspberry slurry to it just to kind of bring it back into focus. I've grated a little bit of nutmeg, which I think is a lovely I twist love to it. Oh, it's a fantastic, it's, it, it just it just comes <clears> out. <throat> and here again, now we're working with a port wine. You remember the port wine from earlier? Yes. So the port wine is rep repeated again. Also the apricots. Oh, there it is. And, and I noticed the wine you've got with it. And we've got another little red wine. E interesting. A, a nice uh, Long Island port. Yes, we exactly. go well with that. That's perfect for that. That's terrific. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, let's get a chance now to, uh, we're going to bring also, speaking about port, I've already right. poured okay. uh, some uh, Long Island port. This is Osprey's Dominion again. Again, our good friends from Osprey's Dominion. And uh, they made available to us their, um, their, their port. And uh, this is a very interesting wine. I'm not quite sure what is in it. And it doesn't really tell me. But I can promise you one thing. There are grapes in it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Are you sure? I can promise that. Okay. Yeah, Osprey's Dominion, North Fork of Long Island. So, um, and that's terrific. And that's 19.5 percent. Hmm. Wow. So, uh, uh, Joanne, could we trouble you for that some of that wonderful dessert that Cal made? Absolutely. Oh, that looks great. Terrific. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Awesome. She has such a beautiful voice. Yes. Wonderful. <laughs> terrific. Give her her own show. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Now let's try this because. Uh, Oh, I think you're going to enjoy that. Oh, God. Oh, God. Here, you know, go home. I'm just going to eat this thing and just <laughs> enjoy myself with a glass of port. If you want to look at this. How do you do this fat-free? It's easy. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't look. <laughs> mm. Oh, the apricot. I'm it's a nice I'm blend. It's a nice blend oh, of two different fruits. They, you know, they, absolutely they make a wonderful marriage together. I am crazy over apricots. Oh, my God. Mm. It's fantastic. Mmm. Mm. Outrageous dessert. Let's try that with the uh, Osprey's Dominion port. Mm. Wow. Wow. Wait until you try this with the port. The port mm -hmm. is perfect mm. because a lot of wines will get lost with that. It is so full flavored that you'll be in big trouble to the, the wine, you won't even taste it. Wow. It, try it with the port. Watch what happens. Watch, watch what happens now in your mouth. Tell me that that isn't. Wow, <laughs> smooth highway. Smooth. This was a nice. Well, this was a nice bridge. There you this go. This was a nice bridge. Absolutely, with the sauce that you have and everything. Try that, Carl. It's nice because you're you're tasting it here. Absolutely. And this is where I want you to feel the food at, right here. You know, mm. long you, you mean it doesn't go down? No, it doesn't go down. <laughs> <laughs> Just hangs out there. Yeah, this is, is lovely. That good? This is lovely. Is that good? I'm telling you, you give me the good food, I'll give you the good wines. Okay. That was uh, that was worth another. Sip. Oh, that was absolutely yeah. terrific. Yeah. Listen, we're, we're just about out of time. Wow, terrific. Will you, will you come back again? I've always come back. Okay, absolutely. Yeah. I, w I would love to see you, gentlemen, come back again. Show us some great cooking from Olivium. Yes. And and show me all of your wonderful, just eclectic and, and different flavors and, and tastes and how everything gets bridged together and that at the end it all has rhyme and reason and that it works. We'll bring some world cuisine to the table the next time. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Thank, thank, thank you, you so very much, much Chef Calvin Kerr, Chef Carlington Stevenson. Thank you very much. Thank you me. very much and thank you Joanna Abreu very much for coming down. I appreciate all of you helping us and it was just, My pleasure. just a lot My of pleasure. fun. And I hope that you gain some fun uh, recipes here, and you could see how it's done, and this way you could do it at home. It really is simple when you have a master showing you how to do it. And, as I always say, he does it with passion. Dr. Pass is telling you, whatever you do, do it with passion. Toast to passion. It's a passion. <laughs>